Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday. It's 6 a.m., which means we are starting the daily race. So glad to have you here, whether you're watching it live or, or catching it on demand a little bit later. Just thrilled that you are starting your day with God, like so many others here, as we are studying the book of Joshua. We're learning about God delivering his promise that he made hundreds of years earlier through Abraham, that through his descendants, uh, through this land, through this nation, the whole world will be blessed. And Joshua and the Israelites are making their way through this promised land. They've uh, conquered Jericho, they've conquered Ai, and now we're going to read about their next interaction. And all along the way, this, uh, the book of Joshua doesn't give every single interaction, every single account. Um, that's not the point of it, but it's the lessons that they're learning along the way, what God is teaching them through uh, the conquering of the promised land. And this is an important lesson they learn here today that uh, transcends, that applies to us directly right here, right now. now. Let me read what takes place. It says, Now all the kings of the west of the Jordan River heard about what had happened. Uh, these were the kings of the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jezubites, and all who lived in the hill country in the western foothills and along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea as far as the north as the Lebanon Mountains. These kings combined their armies to fight as one against Joshua and the Israelites. So everyone is, is terrified. They're banding together to fight against Joshua. But when the people of Gibeon heard uh, what Joshua had done to Jericho and Ai, they resorted to deception to save themselves. They sent ambassadors to Joshua, loading their donkeys with weathered saddlebags and old patched wineskins. They put on worn out patched sandals and ragged clothes, and the bread they took with them was dry and moldy. When they arrived at the camp of Israel at Gilgal, they told Joshua and the men of Israel, we have come from a distant land and have asked you to make a peace treaty with us. And the Israelites replied to the Hivites, how do we know you don't live nearby? For if you do, we cannot make a treaty with you. So God was very clear as they are taking over the sun. You're not making treaties with people. This is your land. Uh, you are not you know, keeping the people in it. You must uh, completely remove them from the land. Uh, the Israelites replied to these Hivites, How do we know you don't live, by, live nearby? For if you do, we cannot make a treaty with you. They replied, We are your servants. But who are you? Joshua demanded. Where do you come from? They answered, Your servants have come from a very distant country. We have heard of the might of the Lord your God and all he did in Egypt. We have also heard what he did to two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River, King Sion and Hesh of Heshbon and King Og of Bashan. So our elders and all our people instructed us, take supplies for the long journey. Go meet with the people of Israel and tell them, we are your servants, please make a treaty with us. This bread was hot from the ovens when we left our homes, but now as you can see, it's dry and moldy. These wineskins were new when we filled them, but they're now old and split open, and our clothing and sandals are worn out from the very long journey. So the Israelites examined their food, and they examined their food, but they did not consult the Lord. That's, that's the key phrase in this whole passage. They did not consult the Lord. Then Joshua made a peace treaty with them, with them and guaranteed their safety. And the leaders, leaders of the community ratified their agreement with a binding oath. Three days after making the treaty, they learned these people actually lived nearby. The Israelites set out once to investigate and reach their town in three days. The name of these towns were Gibeon, Kafira, Baroth, and Karath Jerim. But the Israelites did not attack these towns, for the Israelite leaders had made a vow to them in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. Here we see this, this interaction here. The Israelites are being lied to. Joshua is being deceived. These people um, live well within the promised land. They are on the uh, in the pathway of destruction, and they come up with a story. They ask for a peace treaty. Now you might be thinking, like, well then. They lied, so isn't the peace treaty null and void? Like, why, why even keep it? Like, they lied, tear it up, throw it away, and do what you were planning on doing before. But, but that's not how you, this works. You sign a sacred treaty, you sign a holy treaty with someone, you, you do not break that treaty, that oath. Otherwise, uh, they, they feared that God was going to, to punish them for that. So they ended up making these people their servants. Uh, they were now made the, the woodcutters, uh, of the, um, of the sanctuary. They were in charge of collecting wood, cutting wood, 
providing this, this service, this manual labor for the Israelites. Uh, kind of interesting what, what ends up going on with these people. They, they don't kill them, but they uh, end up working for them. The key here, though, is that one phrase that I, I stopped. It says, they did not consult the Lord. They did their investigation. Joshua asked questions. He even pushes, like, where are you from again? How far away have you gone? And they told him, no, long ways away. Look look at our supplies. Look how long it's taken us to get here. Joshua, it says Joshua looked at it. He examined it. He did his research. And he made his, the best decision he could based on the research he had in front of him. But he did not consult the Lord. I think so often we find ourselves in the same exact situation. We forget to pray about decisions because they seem obvious. They seem maybe menial. Like, of course this is a decision I need to make. But consulting the Lord, asking God, praying about it is so important. Bringing God in on all the decisions that we make. Not just the big ones, not just the confusing ones, but developing a habit, developing a pattern of a conversation with God whenever decisions are made. This is the point of this account. This is a tough lesson that Joshua had to learn here. That even when it seems obvious, we, even when it seems you've, you're making the right decision, Include God in the process because only God can see the things that we cannot see. You don't know what you don't know. And uh, that's our lesson here for today. Are we in the habit of asking God, of turning to him when we make decisions? Uh, not being paralyzed that you know, we're afraid to you know, make any decisions in life. That, that's, that's not what it's about. But it's, God, you see the big picture here. This is what I see. This seems like the obvious next step. God, even the prayer could be, God, this is the path that I'm heading unless you make it obvious to me that, that I shouldn't do this. That quick conversation with God, inviting him into the process, being aware of his presence is what he asks us of and, and what honors him in the first place, including God in our decisions. If you want God's blessing in the decision, you better bring him into the conversation as well. Prayer, the power of prayer. And with that, let's pray for the day. God, we come to you today and we start our day with you. We, are, we don't have to invite you into our lives, God. You are present with us. But God, we are becoming aware that you are with us. We are reminding ourselves every morning, uh, renewing ourselves, reminding ourselves of, of your presence, of your power in our life. So God, as we go throughout today, lead and guide us, direct us. God, as we think about maybe different decisions we have to make or upcoming um, situations, God, uh, give us guidance and direction on those. Make it apparently clear what our next steps are. Uh, help us to have the patience to uh, consult you, to bring you into the conversation. God, because we know, we recognize here today how, how limited our sight is, how limited our view is, how limited our understanding is. But God, you know all, see all, and are everywhere. That's why we worship you. That's why you are our God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great rest of the day, and I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now on the next Daily Race. Take care.